All right, everybody, we are back here. Yeah. Coach RJ Manny Calisto of www.fitclub.fit. So today we're going to talk about aging well. So the very first question I want to ask you, Manny, is what are some of the things that you do to reverse aging? Do things I've never done before. Okay. That's the, one of the key things. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, just in even my teaching. Uh, I was a K-8 to person. I'm teaching high school now. Mm -hmm. So when people say, why, why would you teach high school? Because I've never done it before. Mm -hmm. And so doing things that you, Fit Club, I've never done anything yeah, like this before. Fitness, I'm almost 60 training, and yeah. I've worked out my entire adult life. I yeah. was a, 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 you know, a good swimmer and I've swam all my life. Yeah. I've done a lot of different things. But here's what I know about that too. And it's true at any time, any age. We, we stop and go, we stop and go kind of thing. We start something, we let it go, we die, whatever it is. But I've always believed that any day is a good day to start again, mm -hmm. any day. Mm -hmm. So no matter how long, maybe it's been a year since mm -hmm. you've worked out, maybe it's been five years, yeah. just start, right? Right. The other thing about is so key to aging, I think, is, is community. And as I keep saying that, and family. Yeah. Like you have to stay connected to people. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest challenge for anyone aging is that they will fall into old habits of mm -hmm. is being isolated, which mm -hmm. is a killer, to be honest, being isolated. I know some people are not people, people like myself. Mm -hmm. I love being around people. They energize me. Not everybody's that way, but yeah. we do need to have that one person. We need to have yeah. somebody who we can talk to, hang out with, mm -hmm. uh, and, and find, our, find our tribe, our, our group, our, our posse, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and create, I think it's important some people could say, I have all the friends I need. I don't believe that. I think right. it's always good to make new friends and yeah. make new connections with people in different places. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, community will lead to purpose or purpose will lead to community. Okay. So if you are wanting to be active, mm -hmm. hang out with active people. It's true. <laughs> okay? It's true. If you want to be creative, yeah. hang out with creative people. Mm -hmm. If you want to be uh, you know, outdoors a lot, yeah. then hang out with people who hang out or outdoors a lot, mm -hmm. right? And so for me, that's a key part of getting older is that you find continue to look for community and not just the folks you've always hung out with which mm -hmm. are great long-time relationships are important for us yeah. you know but it's always that openness to meeting new people mm -hmm. being in new situations mm -hmm. and doing things that even scare you which is important because yeah. or challenge you mm -hmm. uh, because as soon as you stop being challenged that's when you kind of sit back and kind of get used to you know just routines that don't necessarily help you grow. I, I don't think, the people that I know that are in their 80s, mm -hmm. and I say to them, when I grow up, I want to be you. Like right. in their 90s, your grandfather 100. Yeah. I, I joke about that because I think age is relative in a mm -hmm. state of mind, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, I, I'm, I'm almost 60, but if you're in your 80s, yeah. you know, and you're in good health, I say to the person, uh, I want to be like you when I grow up right. because that's what my goal is, is to be as active as they are. Yeah. And then I ask them, how did, how did that happen for you? Okay. And they'll tell me, I kept moving, I mm -hmm. bike, I, mm -hmm. whatever it is, right? It's I nothing do yoga. Like, it's nothing crazy. It's not, no, no, not, not supplements necessarily <laughs> yeah. or medic, I mean, medications, whatever it is. Yeah. It's simply an attitude of yeah. uh, what can I do next mm. that's interesting to me that uh, how do I develop the passions I already had all my life and uh, now as a retired person I get to do that. One of my passions is still teaching. Mm -hmm. I kind of gave up you know, running a school but I didn't give up uh, teaching which okay. I still do. Mm -hmm. That's so when you ask what my day's like, it's teaching, it's working out, it's looking after my grandson which is you know, who I call my heart. Okay. And so, and then uh, you know, and then it's going out and doing what I've always done mm -hmm. which is uh, you know, be around people because they do energize me, yeah. you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of be a quiet extrovert sometimes, okay. but, uh, you know, once you get to know me, then, you know, we're the best buds right. and kind of thing. And I cherish my long time relationships. I cherish my long time friendships mm -hmm. and I cherish my family, you know, so those are things that, uh, that keep me young. I don't know if the word young, but keep me present and one thing I'll say about even my teaching, the reason I've chosen to, to teach in high school is because I think that it's important to stay connected to, to be around young people mm -hmm. as you get older. Mm -hmm. When we when we're not, if we don't have your own, if you don't have grandchildren, if you don't have to have grandchildren or you know nieces and nephews that are teens or so on, mm -hmm. that's not part of your life, then find some place where you can hang out with them or meet mm -hmm. them, find out what's important to them because no one's more present in the day than your average 
adolescent, right? right? Uh, and it isn't just about helping you how to use your phone. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Which I'm hoping well, they will do, my yes, kids. <laughs> yes, but it will be, you know, what's, what's important, what's happening in the world today. Yeah. Because someone my age... Change, things change. Things it's change. Always change. Always changing. Yeah. And, and they will always change. And, and be excited about those changes. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like, oh my gosh, you know, the good old days. Yeah. I, I don't look back at the good old days at mm -hmm. all because some of them weren't so good. Right. But also, I, I look forward to better days. Mm -hmm. And I also know that if I stay connected to people living in the present, mm -hmm. I then live in the present, that right? Sense, yeah. Because it's very easy in mm -hmm. your 60s, 70s to become the get off my grass kind of person. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't be that person. Well, you came in, you saw those teenagers playing basketball. And I did. I said hi I put them. that up for them. You did? Yeah, I did. Awesome. Yeah, I love yeah. And they were loving energy. It. I and, yeah, the kids the actually brought the basketball hoop from the side and they, they put it up for And me. you know what comes out of that too? When somebody like me walks past them, mm -hmm. they say hi. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they learn respect. And, yeah, they yeah. say hi because yeah. they're happy. Yeah. They're doing something they love. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and I think most kids would act that way if they get a chance to do things they love, mm -hmm. right? And rather than seeing them as, you know, which is easy for someone my age to look mm -hmm. at younger people and, and not have patience for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe, you know, I did spend my life around young people, not, my, not just my own. What's young people to you? <laughs> my young Zero. person? What, what's, a young, what's a young people? These days, I'm 42, these, so I don't know what, what young is. Even 20-somethings really. Okay. You know, that's young, young. Oh, that's really young. Okay. If you're 20 to 25, yeah. you're pretty young okay. yeah, to me. I mean, I've got a daughter who's 32, so, yeah. and, uh, but, uh, yeah, those, uh, yeah. So what am I? <laughs> you're still, you're still what am I? Anyone in their 40s is still pretty young to me. Because 40, I can, I, it's, I have to think back. But then yeah. I think, you know, when I'm feeling good, when yeah. I'm really in good health, mm -hmm. I do feel like I'm not that different uh, than I was in my 40s. But here's the yeah. thing, too. Like, everybody says this even as you get older. I don't know what my body, I can look in the mirror and clearly I don't look the way I did at 42. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I had hair and didn't have a white beard for one thing. <laughs> didn't look like Santa Claus. Okay. Uh, I like the beard. A, a, I like the white beard. It looks oh, I, good I'm on good. You. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good with it. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I embrace my gray completely. Yeah. But, uh, but I just think that uh, it, it's just important to, it's, it's a state of mind. Yeah. And so for me, and I've heard people say this in their 90s, mm -hmm. you know, I may look in the mirror and yes, my body definitely looks like someone in the 90s, but my mind is still 20-something. <laughs> uh, right. I, I haven't really changed, yeah. you know. Doing many things about it. I, I like to think that when people are around me, they're mm -hmm. around someone who uh, sees themselves, at least in, in their way that they think, mm -hmm. younger than what you might be when someone calls you sir. <laughs> I, I visited my grandparents recently. My grandpa turned 100. And one of the things, well, two things I was most proud to see from this man. We weren't close, you know, big age gap. Right. There was tons of us grandchildren. And it was that he had about a dozen cards wishing him happy birthday from friends. Mm -hmm. These are friends at 100. Yeah. You would think that this guy would know nobody. Yeah. Like everybody you would think would be gone that he was close with. Because no, he's, he's made new friends. He's, he's made new friends. Yes. And they, these were handwritten cards. Yes. So they weren't like... You know, young people writing their, you know no, what I mean? Like no, it was like really people that was write, writing their cards out. And the second thing about him was that he, so I was visiting with him and all of a sudden he's just randomly leaves. And I said, where's he going? And he's going, oh, he's going for his gut and his coffee. So he walks over to his scooter. He brings out his scooter. He drives in his scooter. I'm trying to go next to him. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm going to come with you. And he just takes off. So the one thing was his cognitive isn't super clear. I don't think he's ever been a... A great communicator ever right. since he was young, right. but physically, you know, and community, he's always been that guy. Yeah. Now, my grandma, who's 93, I think my grandma spent a lot of time in the house cooking, Looking cleaning, traditional, others. taking care of the kids, that Looking kind of out. stuff, but I don't think she ever physically challenged herself. So physically, she has a lot of inabilities, but when you sit down and have a conversation with her, it's yeah, so stimulating. I'm like, wow, like this is, thinker, this sure. is amazing. Like just to have this direct conversation without any pauses, yeah. gaps, you know, rebuttals, you know, yeah. debates, like it was all there. So and like sharpness, physical and community, huge. Yeah. And you're accessing all this wisdom, yes. right? Yes. When you're, when our, because our grandparents can teach us things with saying very little too, yeah. just by, you know, it's the old, you know, I do, you do, we do kind of yeah. thing, right? Mm -hmm. we, we learn a lot of things from our grandparents mm -hmm. and even our parents that way. My vavo, my grandmother, my dad's mom, mm -hmm. uh, my maternal grandmother, 
taught me everything I needed to know about compassion. Okay. But she also was a walker. Mm -hmm. She walked everywhere in her village. She walked yeah. to church. She walked to to her neighbors. She walked yeah. to grocery. She walked for like hours. Mm -hmm. And I used to tag along with her when I was a little boy on okay. the island and yeah. literally hang on to her skirt. Yeah. And I know that my my passion for walking. Okay comes from her. I know that, right? Yeah. Because uh, it's, and my dad was a walker too. And so I know that that's, and walking, Fit Club's important to do things like this. Absolutely. It's good to find community and different ways to stay active. Mm -hmm. But I've always said this, you can walk your way into good health. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, just walk your way. Mm -hmm. And you talk about getting our steps in even yeah. within the workouts, yeah. right? Uh, I, I don't, I count my steps like your phone counts them for you. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but the fact- You gotta get you one of these, Manny. Yeah, you see, I haven't gotten to one of these things yet. Like these- It's, it's well, amazing. Brad has a watch and yeah. all that. But uh, it's- uh, The young person says, or the, the, I guess the middle young is telling you to get one. Okay, <laughs> I'll put that on my list okay. of things to get. So I think what I'm learning from this is that not only to hang out with young people so that you can stay relevant and stay present, but also that you as a younger should be connecting with those that are older with oh, yeah, you because always. there's always something that you could take away or, yeah. you know, it's just a whole different like vibe, you know, yeah. like we talk about different vibes. It's like, if you're always around people like me, I would probably go nuts, yeah. right? Where it's like, dah, 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 it's important right? to get out of our bubbles. We yeah. all have our bubbles, right? Mm -hmm. We had them during the pandemic, but the, the yeah. real, the bubble is the sense that, that we want to hang out with people who basically, you know, think a lot like us, which yeah. is important. You, you, know, you don't want to be with someone who's always <laughs> contradictory to everything <laughs> yeah. you say. That, yeah. That's not very fun either. Yeah. But you also want to be in a place where sometimes people will challenge you. And then when you're challenged, then we learn something that we're lacking a lot of in these days, which is, uh, you know, not being in those polar opposites, being more in the middle and the gray mm -hmm. and in the compromising of, because that's good for our mental health too. We, we need sometimes to be challenged. Our ideas need to be challenged because okay. when our ideas aren't challenged, mm -hmm. then we have a harder time adjusting to new things right. and new ways of, and other people's ideas. Yeah. And then we might become more from a place of judgment. Again, mm -hmm. avoiding the get off my grass, yeah. attitude or all oh, those kids or all oh, the good old days <laughs> yeah. or all those things that we say especially mm -hmm. in my age mm -hmm. and even older is that you know we long for something that wasn't necessarily a good thing sometimes mm -hmm. or we long for the good things thinking they're that they've that they're gone and yet we don't realize that we have a responsibility to keep those good things going right. like kindness and you know and connection mm -hmm. and respect and all that we can model that because we have to because there are younger people watching us mm -hmm. and I'm watching folks that are older than me, like mm -hmm. my grandparents, like your granddad, yeah. you know, for help and, and guidance uh, because uh, they've been, you know, like they say, been to that roadie already. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's important to, to stay connected with people older and younger than you and yeah. certainly have your peers too because your peers, you know, they know the music you're talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And the, and the TV and yes, the movies you know, and the clothes. For me, like, and... they know what the Brat Pack yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're looking at me like, I, you don't do know, I, know, the I know who they are. You that do was know. Sammy Davis, right? No, oh, that's the Rat Pack. Oh. That's even before me. Okay. The Brat Pack is, okay. is uh, you know, um, uh, what's her name? Demi Moore and the 80s. This is okay. the 80s Brat Pack. All the okay. ones that were in the John Hughes the movies, movies of, uh, of the 1980s. Give me, the, give me a couple titles. Uh, Pretty in Pink. Okay. Go, keep uh, going. Who else do I? <laughs> Breakfast Club. Okay, yes. yes the, that's that's the ultimate because most of the back is in that movie, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's Emilio Estevez. Yeah. That's Ali Sheedy. Yeah. That's uh, uh, Andrew McCarthy. Okay. That's Rob Lowe. Yes. Who, by the way, such a good looking there's man. There's a great looking man. <laughs> but here's the thing: uh, they just made a documentary about this group, right? It's okay. coming out soon on Hulu, whatever. Yeah. What's great about it is uh, they're just uh, they're my age, right? Yeah. Like, we came of age at the same time, okay. and they look pretty darn good. Yeah. Which you know, of course, they've had good healed lives. They, they've done <laughs> yeah. well for yeah. themselves, yeah. Uh, but they're all doing well, yeah. right? And that's a good thing uh, mm -hmm. when you think about your peers and thinking, you know, not the guy that peaked in high school. Right. <laughs> I, I was more of the Corey Feldman. Corey Haim, yes. uh, towards Lost Emilio Boys. and the Lost Boys, yeah. uh, Young that's Guns, like, that's where I started. Early 90s. That's where I started. Yeah, yes. late, 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 late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. I'm definitely rooted in 1980 to yeah. 85. Okay. I'm a child of Live Aid, right? I was yeah. in high school when Live Aid was, was the thing. Okay. I'm, I'm a Duran Duran, oh, okay. Madonna, yeah, yeah, Michael yeah. Jackson, Cindy Lauper, uh, Sting. 
She's came a little later, yeah. late, 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 about mid eighties. No, okay. not too long. Yeah, yeah. I like the Cure. You know, we're talking yeah. some of the best music ever to happen, and everybody says that about I, their I own think so. coming of age. I think so. I, I was an eighties like uh, metal guy. Oh yeah, you know? me too. But uh, I love nineties R and B. Like, what if you're was your favorite metal group? Uh, well, I, I like like. Motley Crue, oh, like those, sure. that maybe a little bit later into the '80s. Yeah, Slayer. But yeah, yeah. Those and uh, well, I really love Bon Jovi. He'd be my my number one go-to. Bon I don't know Jovi. if he would fit in that category. For me, it was but Def Leppard. Def Leppard. Yeah. yeah. Def we Leppard. saw them in concert two years ago. A bunch of us from the Fit family went to oh. Def Leppard, Motley Crue, uh, Poison, yes. and Joan Jett. All good. And it was like an amazing ones. concert. Yeah. yeah. I was in the Cougars Den there. <laughs> I'm sure you were, because one of my dearest friends, my long time, 30 plus years, is one of the biggest. She literally goes to every Motley Crue yeah. uh, uh, concert that uh, okay. they have, and she's, uh, she's originally from, from Philadelphia, yeah. and uh, yeah, never misses a show, but then she just saw, you know, in Florida, Mick Jagger, the, St the Stones, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so. amazing. So let's wrap this up, this second video, with what keeps you motivated, and how do you keep yourself motivated to work out regularly? Uh, my family motivates me, to be honest, trying to be healthy for them. Um, the, the fact that uh, when I move in my body and it doesn't hurt, mm -hmm. I used to say to you that when I was able to rock, one of the first things that I got out of Fit Club, uh, my grandson was only like six months, okay. I was looking after him, rocking him, my back's killing me, my yeah. arms are killing me. Yeah. And I realized six months later, they're not. Okay. And he's getting heavier because yeah. he's growing, yeah. right? And so I want to be able to, I just don't, as much as I can, I don't want my body to limit my options okay. and what I can do. Right. I want to be able to hike when right. I'm in my 70s. I want to be able to swim. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to move on a bike. And I see lots of people doing that mm -hmm. in their 60s, 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to, if I, if, you know, with my good health, uh, and I believe that uh, my chances are improved for good health yeah. or bouncing back from something. Okay whatever the heck I'm dealing yeah, with right yeah, now. Yeah. I'm hoping that by being active and staying engaged, that I know that that has a, a, a positive mental effect mm -hmm. on how you feel because the body may still be broken, right. but if, again, I said the spirit's in good shape, yeah. then that may get you to the other side of this, right? right, right. And, and you know, no guarantees, no one knows what's coming, but I do know that my chances are better uh, at overcoming illness mm -hmm. or preventing it from happening again. Yep. I've had a I, like everyone else, things have come and gone, but, uh, but I, uh, you know, I even uh, hernia surgery a couple of times, and I can see myself at Cindy Clausen walking with a cane mm. uh, two days after the surgery because the doctor will tell you the first thing you need to do when you have abdominal or anything is okay. move. Because oh. if you don't move, hips, yeah. knees, whatever, yeah. then your, your, your recovery is going to be slower. Shoulder, whatever it might be, right. move, right. even if it hurts. Yeah. Just move a little bit at a time, like yeah. you said, you're one percent. Yeah. You know, and I, I walked around Sydney Clawson track, yeah. like I felt like I was ninety. And I was only in my thirties when that would happen, right? But you know what? Each day, I started getting closer to how I really feel, like to my age, yeah. because I have to keep moving, and that's yeah. what you do, okay. when, especially when you're when you get injured. So, you know, the motivation should be for me. The motivation is to keep moving, yeah, and not stop. Yeah until you have to. Right. <laughs> and I think for a lot of members or those that are like maybe getting into this routine is that like now they're training at a higher level. For like sure. the workouts that we do can be, you know, they're conducive to everybody. Like mm -hmm. you start on your first day, somebody in your group might have done a thousand workouts already. For sure. And so everybody kind of moves at their own pace. But I think once you get used to that higher bracket of training, like the circuit training, lifting heavier weights. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen you do box jumps, right? Most people just completely omit jumping in yeah. their entire life. Yeah. And, and, it make, and running forward and backwards. Like yeah. people, most age, people can't even walk backwards. The, yeah. the bouncing on your knees and yeah. stuff. And so I think once your body gets used to that at any age, I think that you need to continue to do that. Yeah, because you just maintain it, right? Yeah. You're maintaining that level of activity and mm -hmm. flexibility. Mm -hmm. You want to, I used to say, you know, if I can't get more flexible, let me at least maintain what I'm able to do right now okay. in my, in my, as I enter 60s, right? right? At least if I could do that. If I'm doing that in my 70s and 80s, that's a pretty good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't want to go backwards. It's, it is, you know, and people know this, and you lose your mobility mm -hmm. and life changes for you. Everything changes. Yeah. 
it, it's life is is harder. It's it's limiting. Yeah. It's it's depressing to yeah. be honest. Sometimes uh, we know that when that happens to us for a limited time because you have a surgery like a knee surgery, yeah. you know how hard it is to mentally kind of get past that. Yeah. Going but, downstairs. But going down the stairs. Going <laughs> up the stairs. Slipping. But if it's a way of life, yeah. And I don't want it to be a way of life. If yeah. I can if I can avoid not being able to move as a mm. at being a way of life like a yeah. new normal or yeah. you know then uh, yes things happen to us but the reality is i've seen lots of people who have had huge challenges physically mm -hmm. and have found their way through it mm -hmm. and on the other side of it yeah. and and yes made it work as best as they could because right. even with the way i'm feeling now day by day i just kind of take it day by day yeah. that's all i can do i can mm -hmm. and and i wake up every morning thinking I got all these things I want to do. If, if, if I can't, it's okay every now and then to say, no, I'm going to skip that one thing okay. because I need to. Uh, or, uh, but if I can, I, I'm going to try because, yeah. uh, because by doing that, tomorrow would, might even be better than, okay. than today was, right. right? Okay, so we have 60 seconds left, okay? You keep talking about Portugal and everybody yes. keeps telling me Portugal is the place to be. You have 60 seconds to sell me and the Fit Fam on why we should go to Portugal. <laughs> Here we go. Well, timer if, starts. If you want to see one of the most beautiful places on the planet, it is a biased opinion, no doubt. But the island I was born on, and especially São Miguel, I'm not just even talking about Portugal at the continent. I'm talking about the islands, the Azores, which I'm partial to, of course. It is a piece of heaven. And anyone who's ever been there, and there's been a lot of people I know who have gone, yeah. who have gone for the first time and never come back disappointed. It is a piece of heaven. It's if you like waterfalls, if you like uh, a lot of greenery, if you yeah. like black sand beaches, which are different from Ooh. most, like lab, because it's a volcanic island. Yeah. Uh, I literally should be working for tourism at Azores. <laughs> okay. Some people have said that. Okay. If you follow me on my Facebook, you yeah. will know that I post lots of videos of the island yeah. and even Portugal in general. And I do that because it's a hidden gem. On one hand, I want one of the best things that happens to me is when I say I'm from San Miguel Azores, people go, where? Yeah. And I love that. Okay. Because that means it's still unspoiled. Mm. Okay? Because mm. that's not true. Like, I'm from, if you say I'm from Venice, everybody's going to know I'm right. from Venice, right? right? But, uh, but, but at the same time, I still want people to, if they want to travel somewhere, I want them to discover, a, I think, a beautiful place okay. that they will never, that they'll want to return to most likely but they will also appreciate it for what it is, which is most important to me, being outdoors, I say this all the time, it's good medicine. Yeah. It, I know not everybody's outdoors, but if you're, if you're not feeling good, go outside, yeah. because you're gonna feel better. All, all the gurus, so all the health gurus that I follow, the one thing that they all talk about is taking high doses of vitamin D. Yeah. And that can all be accomplished by just standing in the sun for five to 10 Pretty minutes. Pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. And also fresh air and just being in that beautiful connection between us and, and Mother Earth and nature. Yeah. Uh, it truly gives us that perspective of being part of something bigger. And whatever your faith or your spiritual path is in this mm -hmm. life, all of it comes from a, a wonderful source, I believe. I want to believe that it's a, a, a beautiful source, a life giving source. And that when you go out into nature, you can connect with that source, whether it's God, Jesus, whoever it might be for you. I believe that it's there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, in, it's in the trees and it's in the river and it's in the waterfall and it's just in the plants that you're, you know, you're, you're standing beside mm -hmm. or on that trail that you're walking, right? Okay. So uh, that's why I always, why, why the Azores, why Portugal? Well, partly because I was born there, of course, but also because I believe that when you're outside, whether there or and riding mountain or just in your local park in here in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you need to find a way to get outside as much as you can mm -hmm. in, in, in any season too, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a challenge for us sometimes. It is for sure. Okay, so we're gonna, we have one more video to go. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start the video off with three things. What's the plane ride like there? Oh, okay. What, is it expensive to be there? <laughs> okay. Is it, what's, how do you get around? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then what, language can we get away with speaking english oh, down there oh, totally. so that's that's going to be how we're going to start the next video okay. guys manny calisto so it's really it's a tour RJ. it's a tourism video for uh, <laughs> it's a testimonial for going to the A's. i i will say the azores because yeah. i know portugal and i'm trying to beautiful. plan there that's why so i'm going to oh, make sure okay. to tag some people in. yes 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 <laughs> azores. me and jerome are going to go out there yeah so. okay hey azores <laughs> is where it's at not just you could go to the mainland too i'm not saying not going to the mainland but because it's beautiful too <laughs> okay. but we'll see you guys on the next video